is underneath, caught but well short by Laquan Treadwell. It's time for another edition of You Make the Call. IBM presents You Make the Call. The first quarter, it's third and one for the Vikings offense. Do you, A, throw it to Justin Jefferson, B, throw it to anyone else on the field with greater than zero catches this year, C, have anyone but Justin Jefferson throw it to anyone but Kirk Cousins, D, have Cousins pooch punt it, E, have Justin Jefferson throw it to Kirk Cousins, F, deliberately get a delay of game so it becomes third and six so you won't be tempted to call a play where Justin Jefferson throws it to Kirk Cousins. The answer, of course, is E. So throw him back to Cousins. Cousins going to try and run for it. He is going to get swarmed. This week we have a bonus you make the call. Early in the fourth quarter, Kirk Cousins dropped back. Facing no pressure, he immediately checks down to Dalvin Cook rather than look for, say, Justin Jefferson. Dalvin Cook, who on his prior two touches on this drive, gained a total of minus six yards. Good decision, Kirk. Now, who tackles Dalvin Cook? You make the call. A, number 36 for the Giants. Don't know his name, not going to look it up. B, number 53 for the Giants. Didn't know his name, looked it up, but forgot. C, Ed Ingram, trips Cook because he thinks he's Kirk Cousins. Or D, Dalvin Cook. The answer, of course, is D. Dalvin Cook tackles Dalvin Cook. Probably the key play of the game. Double bonus, you make the call. Third quarter, the Giants have it second and seven at the nine-yard line. The smartest player in the league, Patrick Peterson, is lined up to the right side of the defense. Does Patrick Peterson, A, recognize the vacant left side of the field as vulnerable, lean in that direction, and pounce when the play goes that way? B, inexplicably lean toward the center of the field and leave that side of the field completely open so that a tight end more worthless than Irv Smith Jr. can coast for a touchdown. C, use your great leadership to set an example for the rest of the defense. Or D, B and C. The answer, of course, is D, B and C, because that's that's what he did. He inexplicably just left that side of the field wide open despite his great smarts and instincts. And C, he his great leadership... On plays like that also inspired the rest of the defense to leave the entire field wide open. Triple bonus, you make the call. Fourth quarter, third and half a yard, tied at 24. The Giants have the ball. What does the Vikings defense do? Do they, A, put four men in the box for what is an obvious quarterback sneak? B, put nine men in the box and dare Daniel Jones to beat you through the air? Or C, put zero men in the box and hope Jones dies of shock at the stupidity of the Vikings defense? The answer, of course, is A. There are essentially four men in the box for this quarterback sneak that was easily converted. Big surprise. Quadruple bonus, you make the call. Third quarter, Giants have it. Third and seven. Do the Vikings rush three and drop eight into coverage? B, rush nobody and drop all ten guys into the coverage? Or C, do they blitz and sack the quarterback for crying out loud? The answer is C, they blitzed and sacked the quarterback. That's about the only time they applied any pressure all game. Quintuple bonus, you make the call. It's third and eight, second to last offensive play for the Vikings. K.J. Osborne and Justin Jefferson are running routes over the middle of the field. Neither of them is particularly open. You're Kirk Cousins. Do you A, throw to K.J. Osborne, an OK number three receiver, or B, throw it to Justin Jefferson, the number one receiver in the league? The answer, if you're Kirk Cousins, is you throw it to K.J. Osborne. And you throw it a little behind him. The defender's able to get his hand in there and keep Osborne from bringing his left arm up to make the catch. That's what you do if you're Kirk Cousins. You just don't look to Justin Jefferson at all. Now, these you make the calls kind of capture most of the key things that happen in the game. First one, third and one, the Justin Jefferson pass to Kirk Cousins. Um, Kevin O'Connell makes some of the stupidest play calls I've ever seen. The jump pass for Dalvin Cook against the Lions that basically lost them that game. Running Dalvin Cook up the middle on fourth and one all the time. I think the reason Kevin O'Connell thought that play would work Because the Vikings ran that play, I'm sure, in practice. And against our stupid, stupid defense, it worked. And if the Giants had run that play against our defense, it would have been a huge gain. Because none of the Vikings would have kept contained. None of the Vikings would have stayed on that side of the field with the quarterback. Because our defense is that stupid. And you blame Ed Donatell all you want. Well, Kevin O'Connell's the head coach. He oversaw this crap all year. It didn't say a thing. 
And then the second you make the call where, where Dalvin Cook tackled himself, the need to force feed Dalvin Cook. I, I seriously think when, when Dalvin Cook is on the field, the defense should be called for 12 men on the field because he, he is like another defender for them. I mean, you, you take that Cousins check down to Dalvin Cook on that drive that uh, ended with the Darisaw false start. Cook had two touches earlier in that drive, each that went for a three-yard loss, I believe. And so let's not give it to Dalvin Cook anymore this drive. That's just my thought. Let's stop shooting ourselves in the foot. He's gotten a three-yard loss twice. We've overcome it. We're probably not going to overcome another. But Cousins, who has time to throw, who has time to look for other options, just immediately checks down to Cook. And Cook tackles himself, trips over his own feet. And then on the next play, Cousins isn't facing pressure, immediately checks down to Hawkinson, who almost gets the first down thanks to a miraculous push from Ezra Cleveland. But you got to throw it beyond the sticks once in a while. The third you make the call, that's the Patrick Peterson one. I mean, I heard all week, oh, he's so smart. He's teaching this defense everything. Like he's getting them prepared for the playoffs. He's He's coaching them on how to perform in the playoffs. He's like having a coach in the locker room. I heard all this crap. But all this this Vikings fanboy and Vikings media crap about leadership and good locker room guys. This reminds me of Brian Robinson when he was on the team. And he just, he just sucked. He is the only person I have ever seen jump off sides on a fourth and short. That's good leadership there. But they talk him out like he's great in the locker room. And losing him hurt the defense. Well, our great locker room guy, Patrick Peterson, with his great leadership, led to the worst defensive performance since two weeks ago in the Green Bay game. Fourth, you make the call. Um, That was where, yeah, the Giants had a third and a half yard, and, you know, you know they're going to do a sneak. There's a bunch of Vikings lined up right side of the formation, and then there's a few Vikings standing like five yards. It's just this very passive, laid back, like, how can you line up like that? It's just, it makes no sense. And then the last you make the call was that third and eight. Now everybody talks about the fourth and eight, where Cousins threw short of the sticks, and a bunch of abject losers try to defend Cousins. Like, he, he was under too much pressure. He had to get rid of it. A couple drives earlier... When he was facing no pressure, he checked down on consecutive plays that led to us getting a field goal and not being able to take the lead. So to say that Cousins checked down because of the pressure, shut up. He checked down the week before at the end of the first half against the Bears to kill that drive, kept us from getting a field goal because he's too dumb to know that you have no timeouts and you don't have enough time. He doesn't think about the situation. And on that fourth and eight, if you watch the film, yeah, nobody's open downfield. But you know what? The guy on Justin Jefferson is not looking for the ball. You underthrow it a little. Hope the guy interferes with Jefferson. You get a call. You keep the game alive. You give or you don't underthrow it and you just throw it where you think Jefferson's going to be and let him try to make a play. You give him a chance. At least once in the fourth quarter, you give the best player at his position in the league, a chance. Or you know what you can do? You know what a leader does? A leader goes to his best player before the play and says, I don't care what Kevin O'Connell calls. You run a 10-yard out or run this route. Have a route in mind. Tell him to run it and you just throw it to him no matter what. If he's covered, if he's not covered, you just throw it to him. And you count on your offensive line not being able to block because they, they have a tendency to not block when they need to. But anyway... We were talking about the third and eighth, where he threw to Osborne instead of Jefferson. They were equally not open, I would say. It's not like Osborne was open. The guy was right there with him. But Osborne had half a step. And if Cousins makes a better throw, Osborne probably makes that catch. But Cousins didn't make a great throw. It was a little behind him. Osborne had to slow down a little. It allowed the Giants defender to get his arm in, keep Osborne from bringing his arm up. Now, some idiot, idiot Vikings fans are out there saying that was a drop. When you can't get your arm up, it's not a drop. Cousins needed to make a great throw there, and he didn't make a great throw. But that's Cousins. He chooses to go to the worst player. That's his go-to in the big moments. Fourth down, Laquan Treadwell. So what do you do on fourth and one on the most important play of the game? Of course, you throw to Treadwell. That's what you do. That's that's Cousins. K.J. Osborne over Justin Jefferson. That's Cousins. I don't know. Let's, let's talk about this loss. Um... Frankly, if, if, if it hadn't ended with the fourth and eight check down, this would be like a pretty 
simple loss to to handle. Even with the fourth and eight, I was so mad for a couple hours, but it's not that bad a loss. Because if you look at how it played out, they didn't get blown out. They didn't have to make a furious comeback after falling way behind and come up short. They didn't take a big lead and then collapse. They just got slightly outscored the first three quarters, which is how all year went for them. But in the fourth quarter, they weren't able to outscore the opponent, which they were able to do in most fourth quarters this year. So it was really the fourth quarter where they came up short. That's it. They only scored three points on three drives in the fourth quarter. That's why they lost. Offense wasn't good enough in the fourth quarter. And it wasn't all Cousins. That uh, second to last drive, I think they went three and out. To me, that was all O'Connell doing a stupid dump off to Cook, dump off to Hawkinson. But I think the game had pretty much been lost at that point. Once once you settled for that field goal, then let the Giants drive for a touchdown. Man, the Vikings weren't going to win. They needed to score a touchdown to go up 28 to 24 or 27 to 24, depending on if Greg Joseph made the extra point or not. That was their only chance, and they, they couldn't take the lead because Cousins checked down on second down, and check down on third down while not facing pressure. Because that's what he does in the fourth quarter. If we were going to lose, how did I want them to lose? I wanted something like the end of the first half against Washington, where Cousins threw it up to Jefferson. It was intercepted, but he was trying to make a play. So he took a chance. He gave his best player a chance. That was a solid play. It wasn't a terrible throw. It gave Jefferson a chance. We need to keep doing that. And that's that's a play we're going to need against a team like the Bills. He was going for the jugular, and he was going for the jugular by throwing it to his best player. And Jefferson got out muscled. The throw maybe wasn't perfect, but Cousins tried to get it to him, and it failed. But he went down fighting. That's how I wanted this to end. And I'm not surprised it didn't end that way. Because this is what I would have expected from Kirk Cousins. Just throw it up to Jefferson. And the thing with Cousins, the Cousins fanboys, um, it's as if they've never seen a good quarterback in their life. Cousins makes a good throw. Like, Cousins is the only quarterback who's ever made a good throw. Did you watch Daniel Jones all game? He made some good throws too. Okay, Daniel Jones did that because the Vikings defense is terrible. Okay, but when Cousins does it, it's because he's so good right? Cousins is just so good. But when the other quarterback looks good, it's because our defense is terrible. Well, it's true. Our defense is terrible. There's no question about that. But the Giants defense didn't look that good to me either. So we probably could have scored more than 24 points. Now, if we never threw it to Irv Smith, that might have helped. Also, if we didn't give it to Dalvin Cook so he could have six catches for 10 yards, that would have helped. What I do wish for next year, all I want to see is more of Jordan Hicks covering a wide receiver. That's really what I want to see. In seriousness, the key for this team is can't have your only two really good players be pass catchers. Because that's that's what they got. They got Justin Jefferson and TJ Hawkinson. That's it. Those are your only two really good players. Well, maybe Darasaw. But you need more than one offensive lineman and one receiver and one tight end. You need an offensive line. You need a defensive line. You need linebackers. You need a sec. You need so much. They need actual better players. And what I would do is I would try to make a Herschel Walker type trade with Justin Jefferson. You're not going to throw to him in the big moments. So just trade him for a ransom. See if you can get like a Russell Wilson deal for him. Anyway, our awards for this week, the award for sucking so bad for so many years and being so overrated, goes to Irv Smith Jr., who killed a drive. I thought it was the second or third drive for the Vikings, where drops pass that would have been an easy first down. I've been the on the anti-Irv Smith bandwagon for a couple of years. Because he made a great play, great throw to Irv Smith in the end zone that Irv Smith just dropped. While everyone else is like, oh, he's so good. Once he's healthy, oh, he's going to be a great addition. It'll be great to have him back for the playoffs. And no, he sucks. He sucks. Johnny Munt, whoever that is, wherever he came from, is 10 times the player Irv Smith is. My butt cheek clench of the week, that was in the second quarter when Cousins dumped it off to Cook on third and two. And I so expected Cook to do his usual dance, jump backwards, and give up the first down, but he got the first down. So that was good. The underrated catch of the week, that goes to TJ Hawkinson on that fourth and two. And he catches it, and he gets nailed very soon after he makes the catch. And that is the type of play that when you get hit like that, They don't maintain control. And that was a big play, a big catch. 
And I don't know, I kind of wish they would sometimes call plays like that before fourth down. Instead of checking down on every first, second, and third down, maybe maybe try going beyond the sticks before fourth down. The Garrett Bradbury Award for weightlessness, that goes to Garrett Bradbury, who key play, I think it was the um, second down prior to the third and the fourth and eight at the end. Bradbury just gets steamrolled, just steamrolled, absolutely steamrolled. That was a play where Cousins had no choice. There's a lot of talk about, oh, will Garrett Bradbury be back? Will they resign him? Garrett Bradbury wants to come back. And it's like, why is this even a question? Why Why was he back this year? The ass kicking of the week, that goes to, uh, I think it was Galladay for the Giants who just pancaked Duke Shelley. And Duke Shelley, by the way, apparently is, he's been one of the better Vikings defenders this year. And that's, that's one of your better defenders that a wide receiver does that. And you compare that to like a Viking wide receiver and how he doesn't block this play. Thielen doesn't block the guy at all. They're physical. We're not. And last, the, uh, Moa, 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 mother of all, mother of all, mother of all prevents. That goes to the Vikings defense. Uh, that was actually a play that wasn't complete. The play that kept the Vikings in the game. Giants receiver was so open over the middle, and he just absolutely dropped. Would have, would have been an easy first down catch. Looked like Patrick Peterson was covering him there, showing that great leadership also. So I'm not really that upset. Like, I kind of expected this. And also, it just it, it wasn't a heartbreaking type of loss, other than the fourth and eight, which... The only thing that the fourth and eight does is I never want to see Kirk Cousins play for the Vikings again. And I know he's going to be here next year, but I don't want to watch it. And so, I don't know, I may do videos next year. I'll have to decide because I don't want to watch him. It almost will have to be satire or just an anti-Kirk Cousins video because I, I do not want to watch him ever again. It's not just the fourth and eight. It's the third and eight where he could have thrown to Jefferson and didn't. It's the checking down on, on that prior drive in the fourth quarter when he's under no pressure that leads to the fourth and one that they can't convert. And I never want to see Patrick Peterson again. I never want to see Dalvin Cook again. I also never want to see Kevin O'Connell call plays again. Like, Kevin O'Connell, I don't know what this guy's thinking. And last, of course, I never want to see Ed Donatell again. Oh, jeez. Cheer up, Ed. This is not goodbye. It's just I won't ever see you again. Oh, Christ. is underneath, caught but well short by Laquan Treadwell.